this episode of 419 by Design, we'll be visiting the incredible Toledo Twisted Iron. Today we're building a table of um, recycled materials that were sitting in the shop from previous projects. Um, one of the, the pieces are this piece of cherry here that we're going to be using. Uh, this was a, a slab of wood that um, we had to cut the size for a sofa table for a client. And then um, some of this just random one inch tube that we've had sitting around the shop and uh, decided, hey, this would be great to make some table, you know, the frame for, for the table. And this is just gonna be a small, tiny, you know, just a little end table. And uh, we'll put a little decor decorative twist to it too when we, when, uh, after we put the frame together. Uh, first thing we need to do, since now we have all our pieces cut, we have to go in and weld the frame together to, to mount to the, the piece here to make, make everything fit. Okay, um, so right now what I'm working on is uh, we are, I'm, I'm trying to put the legs together here. So I want to clamp the, the parts down to the table so that way I make sure everything gets nice and square when we go to weld this together. Uh, because what happens sometimes when you're welding, the, the heat transfer will pull the legs in and out so you never get a like, nice square straight legs. Here we go. Clamp them square them and then tack it. Yeah, tacking is just basically like, just put like a little, what they call tack welding or spot welding, just to, just to make it so it holds it together and then you can adjust it to however you want. Okay, now I'm gonna finish up the other set of legs. Cool. Now we're ready to go. So the next step is now is to put the frame together, fully together. So put the legs upright so they sit in that, uh, so they sit on the, um, the wood properly. So now what we're gonna do is square up the frame. Now this is what they call squaring. So this, I just had 32 and a half here, this had 32 and a half here. And this helps keep everything square. So when the, the table sits, so when the legs sit upright, you don't have them kicking in at all. Which they are right, a little bit right now. So that, that's why I'm doing it now so I can adjust them and then go back and then weld the whole frame together properly without, so I don't have all the legs kicking all over the place. And then weld it together. So now that we know that the frame fits to the wood top, I went ahead and made some tabs on the horizontal, horizontal bandsaw, so that way we can weld them to the frame, then drill holes, and then and that way we have something to mount the frame to the wood top to. Now, now I gotta weld them on.
right, aspiring metalheads. Can you guess what tool this is? Is it A, a linker rod, B, a vice drill, or C, a coping saw? The answer to that and so much more coming up on 419 by Design. What kind of tool is this? If you guessed a coping saw, you're right. All right, so we're here today because uh, we got a commission from Toledo Spirits. Uh, they want us to build a bar for their tasting room that they're building right now. The, they're expanding their, their um, production facility and then they're gonna build a bar around this uh, production facility that they're building. And so, um, they came to me, they wanted something cool, neat, and then they also wanted it to be um, reused, like reused materials. So what we're going to be doing is um, reusing pieces of the old smokestack from downtown that we use for Echo. And then also we're using some wood joists that they pulled out of the building that the Toledo Spirits Bar is going to be in. And so uh, this is what they originally looked like with the paint on, to, on, on them, and now we're going to um, get, they're going to plane them down and look like this. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is get into cutting for, uh, the pieces for the bar. So we're going to start on cutting the pieces on the bandsaw to create the framework for the bar. So next step in the process is uh, welding and uh, what we're doing is um, I have everything set up here and it's I used a square to square everything to make sure you get a nice tight jo joint at a 90 degree angle and then now I'm going to tack everything together is not that I have everything clamped down. Right now I, I need to square up the legs, weld them together, and then weld them to the frame. So this is the fascia, this is gonna be the front of the bar, and then these legs here are gonna be the back of the bar. As you can see, Joe's doing a really good job right now. This is originally what the planks used to look like, and now this is what the result, this is the end result of what we're dealing with. Okay, these are gonna be stanchions to the bar. Um, the first part of the bar, we welded the frame together. This is gonna be for the kickouts around the bar. Now that the stanchions are done, now we're gonna take them to the Toledo Spirits and put them in place, and then start putting the, the old smokestacks, the curved pieces, uh, attached and attach it to these pieces. All right, so now we're gonna grab the smokestacks off the, the shelf over there. up and get them ready to roll out over to Toledo Spirits. OK, 
Okay, now that we have the frame done and fitted to the top, um, I decided to put a little bit of an art flair into it. So I went through my scrap metal that I have and found a couple little pieces that have some cool, unique shapes to them. And um, also I have some straight bar here to bend into what I want. Um, and then what I'm thinking about doing here is uh, creating a branch coming off the legs and then kind of branching out a, a, a underneath the, the table. Now it's about taking the oxygen acetylene torch and bending the branches into the forms of what I want them in the piece. So when the acetylene, this is the acetylene being on when you're adjusting your torch. And then when you turn on your oxygen, you'll see the flame start to turn more blue. The other thing you want to watch for is the cones in your tip. You want to make sure your cones, or they look like all little cones, because when you adjust the oxygen to a certain degree, you create this big cone. You don't want that. So you're not burning the fuel efficiently. So now that I got a good amount of the branches bent for the, for the frame, uh, some of these branches extend past the frame, so I have to cut them to size so I can weld them to the frame. Coming up after the break, we'll finish up this table project and we'll install the bar at Toledo Spirits. Today's safety tip of the day is eye protection in a welding fabrication shop. So there's different types of um, uh, eye protection that you're gonna need. Uh, one of them is for when you're actually welding. Uh, you, you use a helmet and usually these go from a shade eight to about a shade 15 and depending on how bright the, the ultraviolet light is coming off of the weld. And so basically when, you, when you're doing it, you wanna pair these two together and that's, how, that's, that's uh, what you use when you're, when you're doing that process. 
Um, now, when you're doing a torch process, you wanna use these. These are shade five glasses, and this is your torch. So this helps um, protect your eyes against ultraviolet light coming off of this torch. And then when you're using the grinder or cutoff wheel, you always wanna use clear glasses so you can see exactly what you're doing, because you never know sometimes you could you could be running the wrong way or doing something weird that's not, that that's, that's unsafe. So, but there's also times when you can use these when you're switching back and forth real quick and you don't have time to get to these glasses. You can use these, but you have to make sure you can see through them very well to use the, to use the cutoff wheel. So just remember, it's a must to have proper eye protections for different processes in the shot. Impact drill. Ta da! So now that we're done with fabrication, it's ready for finish. Um, you can finish it in a couple different ways. You can paint the frame black, you can stain the wood a different color, um, you can do a, a variety of different things with, with, with color variations. Uh, me personally, I love the, the actual look of the metal, I love the colors. So I'm gonna paint, I'm gonna clear, put a clear on it, a satin clear. And then I also love the natural look of the wood, so I'm gonna put a satin clear on that after I get done sanding the wood down and, and doing a little bit more finishing work to the wood. Uh, so this is the piece of the smokestack that you guys seen earlier. Um, we are going, we're cutting this to fit in place, so that's why we're cutting this on site right now. Um, right now, and we're also, we're using a plasma cutter to cut the piece. Okay, here we are with the finished bar. Um, we've been working on this for a while. It's quite challenging on certain levels. Um, as you can see from the shop, we started from the framework and built it all the way up. Uh, the, fl the, the flooring on, the, the wood on top is the old flooring from the floor over here at the distillery. The, the wood on the front of the bar is from the floor joists here in the distillery. 
Um, Andrew showed them to me. I said, this would be a great material to put on the front of the bar. So we grabbed the wood from the distillery, took it to the shop, we planed it down, and then we brought it back. But we also, when we were, while we were planing it, we saw that there was paint left on there. We really liked the idea of just kind of leaving a little bit of that rough look. So that's why the, if you look at the, the, the wood, it has the paint on it still. Um, and then we decided, and then we brought it back in and we fitted it to the bar. Okay, here we are with the finished bar. Um, we're here with Andrew. Yeah, so so much so much we decided was kind of in the field because we weren't sure. We knew the general you know length of the bar. That was kind of it, right? So we it was figuring out uh, from everything with uh, the bar team about what they wanted as far as the shape and the placement of things to the electrician. It was really interesting to deal with um, those very real world. Um, aspects of building a building a piece of art, building a sculpture. The idea of being able to use um, uh, some of the the parts of the old uh, smokestack leftovers from building Echo, I think it it kind of set the set the theme for us around using used used material as much as we can, mm -hmm. right? So whatever we've taken out of the building as we've been modifying it, reserving that to use in the bar. I think that it it's a a part of um, who we are. It's a combination of new and, and old. Um, um, very engineered and sometimes packed together from our side. So it, it's, a, it's a good balance. Good times, good times to come. Yeah, thanks. Awesome. Yeah. No problem. Cut.